Good day, listeners. I'm Pastor Felu Moshasson, the host of Living by Grace. I believe one of the greatest gifts that the Lord has given unto us as men is grace, the grace of God. The grace to live fully, the grace to live peacefully, the grace to live joyfully, the grace to experience everything that is good that God has in mind for us. Thank you for joining me and several other members of the Living by Grace family all over the world for this episode. I assure you by the grace of God, you are going to be blessed in Jesus' name. I'd like to have a word of prayer with you before we go into our discussion today. Our Father, who art in heaven, we thank you in the name of Jesus. The salvation of our souls, the forgiveness of our sins, our healing, and all of your blessings that are too innumerable to count that you have blessed us with. Father, thank you. We thank you for the past episodes of Living by Grace. We thank you for what you have done. Thank you for all the testimonies we've received. And thank you for what you are set to do now and even in days and years ahead. In the name of Jesus Christ. We give you all the glory. Thank you for my listeners, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Today, I will be starting with you a series. We shall be considering the life lessons from the miracles of Jesus. Life applicable lessons. From the miracles of Jesus. We will take time to go through these miracles as many of them as the Lord will allow us to. And I'm believing God that through this series you will learn life applicable lessons that will add value to your life. That will make your life meaningful. That will offer you the resources to find your way through the challenges of life and come out victorious and successful in the name of Jesus Christ. So today, we shall be looking at the healing of the leprous man. The first miracle that is recorded in the book of Matthew. Matthew is the first book of the New Testament. And the first miracle that is recorded there is the healing of the leprous man. Our text shall be taken from Matthew chapter 8, from verse 1. Matthew chapter 8, from verse 1. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Verse 3. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Hallelujah. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. The question that came to mind immediately is, what is the secret of immediate answer to prayers? And I'm sure every one of us can relate to that. Who does not want to get an answer immediately? The advent of fast food can, under, can underscore that point. Today, we want everything in a go. There are one-stop supermarkets. Everything you want under one roof. The development of man, the evolution of man, has come to the point where we want everything delivered in one spot. Thank God for the advent of internet and e-markets. You can sit in the confines of your room, order for a car, order for a food. You can even buy a house. You can even do banking. Everything can be achieved on one spot via a single device. So the question again is, what is the secret of immediate answers to prayers? By the grace of God, as we look at this simple testimony, may the Lord cause your heart to discover the truth, and may the Lord strengthen your legs and your feet, I mean, and your hands to be able to run with the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. A few things I would like us to quickly look at concerning the man. Take note. Number one, perspective. The first lesson I want us to learn 
is perspective. What is a perspective? A view. The Bible said, and there came unto him a man with leprosy. That's the way the New Living Translation rendered it. And immediately that tells you that the man was able to separate between himself and his situation. And that is very key to experiencing the move of God. Ability to distinguish between you and what you are going through. Because you see, there are people that as a result of ignorance, they hide themselves to what they are going through. And you cannot separate between them and their situation. But for this leprous man, the Bible says, And there came unto him a man with leprosy. So there was the man, and there was what he came with. Then under perspective, you will see that when the man eventually made the request, this is what he said. He said, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Meaning, he understood that it is his body that has an affliction. His body where he lives inside. That is a fundamental key to experiencing the miraculous. You, you ask me why. Listen. A Christian is a spirit being that lives in a physical body. So your body is your accommodation space. You are not your body. Of course, by extension, if you are not your body, then you are nothing around you that you can see. You are the one that has your body. You are the owner of the body. That's who you are. The person that owns that body. The person that sees that body, the person that lives in that body, that is who you are. And being a spirit, you can never be diseased. A spirit is a perfect being. Spirits don't fall sick. Spirits don't diminish. They don't even die. But the space where a spirit in a beat is subject to time and changes. So, if you do not understand this fundamental, this fundamental truth about your identity, then it will be difficult for you to experience the miraculous. So, number one, what is your perspective of yourself? The leprous man had a right perspective. You know, we can compare that man to the testimony of the four guys that brought a paralyzed man to Jesus. The Bible said they, they brought the man to Jesus. It was not them. They brought the man to Jesus. And the Bible said, when Jesus saw their faith, the faith of the people that brought the man, he healed the man. When Vastiri said, and Jesus reached out his hand and touched him and said, I will be clean. What that is telling you is that the perspective that you have of yourself is a key requirement of the grace of God to work for you. This is what I'm saying. If you see yourself as your situation, then you are forcing the forces of grace to reproduce your situation for you. But if you see yourself as who God say you are, then you are forcing the for, you are you are making the forces of creation to cooperate with you and make your environment to look like you. It's about perspective. Are you what you are going through or are you the one that is going through it? Because see, everything is created in your image. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. He said, the Bible says, let us make man in our image so that he can live like us. In the same vein, brethren, 
if the image you have of yourself is that I am a sick person, I am sick, then everything in your life must be created in the image that you have of yourself. And unfortunately, this is the underlying secret reason why children of God persist in unpleasant situations despite the fact that they are praying. Because in ignorance, they keep associating, they keep identifying with their situation as if though they are their situation. Not understanding the principle that it is what a man sows that he reaps. So if you keep sowing the belief that you are your situation, then the forces of grace in your life must recreate your environment according to your situation. Number one, perspective. And there came unto him a man with leprosy. That's the first thing. I know you pray because I pray. I know you go to church. And I know you do the necessary thing that I expected of us as Christians. But see, brethren, beyond what you do, the question that Grace is asking you this morning is, who is doing it? Because more important than the deed is the doer, the doer's identity. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah, the young prophet, when God was calling him to the ministry of prophecy, to the ministry of a prophet, he said to the Lord, I can't do it. And God asked him why. He said, because I am young. I am small. You see? He was defining himself by his age, his experience, and his standing in the society. And you know what the Bible said? The Bible said God told him, stop saying that you are young. Stop saying that you are small. Meaning, even though you be young in age, even though you be disadvantaged as per political classing, the fact that God has revealed himself to you and has made you to discover what you can do means you are more than that. And so you should go about your life not in the strength of what you have or where you are. You should step into your life in the strength of the description that God gave to you of your life. You know, that's why the Bible says, let the poor say, I am rich. Let the weak say, I am strong. Because of what the Lord has done and has said to you that he has done. Your perspective in every situation makes or mar your life and your destiny. Because time and changes are inevitable to everything in time. Everything that is born in time must degrade with time. But your ability to live a qualitative life that transcends the degradative effect of time is in your perspective. Abraham was 99 years old when the Lord appeared unto him in Genesis chapter 17, chapter 18. And he said, Abraham, walk before me and be perfect and I will fulfill my promise unto you. Further down in that discussion, the Lord said to Abraham, Abraham, stop calling yourself Abraham. Because Abraham is a name that is indicative of his state in marriage. And God says, start calling yourself Abraham. A name that is indicative of his identity in Christ. How can a man that has no child be calling himself the father of princes? That's what I'm telling you. Perspective is the key. That determines whether you are going to make it or you are going to fold in the face of your challenges. Reluctantly, initially, Abraham says, See, God, 
as for having a child, bless Ishmael. But me, leave me like this. And God said, not only should you change your perspective about yourself, you should change your perspective about your means by which you intend to get to your destination. Because in that state, in that case, Sarah, his wife, represents Abraham's means in life to achieve his desires and destiny. For you, my listener, that could mean your business. Because it is by your business that you hope to achieve your dream. It could mean your career. It could even mean your marriage. It could even mean your children. Because your children are your bridge to the future. So for adventure, you that is listening to me, you have a problematic child, a rebellious child. The Lord is speaking to you that the perspective that you hold of your means can either make or mar your means as a very table means to deliver your destination. So he told Abraham, you should not only change your perspective about yourself, you should change your perspective about your wife, representing his means to his destination. Again, we go back to Matthew chapter 8. The story said, and a man with leprosy came unto the Lord. Perspective. The second lesson I want us to learn from the healing of the leprous man. Verse 2 said, when he got to Jesus, and that is submission, surrender, surrender, surrender. When he got to Jesus, the Bible said he went down on his knees and worshipped. Listen, he went down on his knees. With what? The very body that is diseased with leprosy. He brought it down. You know what that meant? It meant that he believed that there is nothing in time, whether money or sickness, poverty or riches, witches or wizard, there is nothing in time that God is not greater than. I believe in God. Not only in the existence of God, I believe in the greatness of God. I believe there is no name mentioned in time that the name of the Lord is not greater than. No wonder the Bible says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run unto it and they are saved. You know, at times in life, we get confronted by challenges that makes our heart to shake. And our heart will shake so badly that it will even shake the knowledge of God out of our heart. And one is tempted to forget that there is God. And when the mention of God is even made to you, the picture that comes to your mind is a slow person. Or a God that is up there, that is not down there, that can feel you. Mm -mm. When this leprous guy, when this guy with leprosy came to Jesus, that body that is leprous, he laid it down before the Lord. Saying, I don't know what men call it. I don't know where it came from. I don't know who sent it to me. I don't know how it came about it. Whether it is a punishment of my father's sin or a punishment of my mother's sin or a punishment of my sin in the past. Wherever this came from, you are greater than it, Lord. He believed in the greatness of God. And so he submitted. He surrendered the situation to the Lord. Beloved, I don't know for how long this darkness has been in your life. I don't know for how long these pains have been. I don't know for how many years you have been crying every night and there has been no change. Listen to the voice of the Lord by me. Take a cue from the testimony of this leprous man. Bring it before the Lord. Lay it before him. Permit me to fast forward to another of the miracles we shall be discussing down the line. It is the miracle of the woman that had the issue of blood. The Bible said in the days that she was ignorant of this revelation I'm giving to you, that woman's faith was in the ways of men. The Bible said for 
12 years, she had moved from one man to another, looking for help, submitting and surrendering her body to all kinds of abuses. And she was even paying for it. And the Bible said for 12 years, she met with disappointment. But one day, as it is for you today, she heard like you are hearing, that no matter how old your situation may be, it's not as old as the ancient of days. Is there anything older than God? There is nothing. It does not matter the root and how embarrassing the situation can be. See, your situation can embarrass you, but it cannot embarrass God. Your situation can ridicule you, but it cannot ridicule God. See, we call upon God because See, there's somebody that is listening to me. The Lord said, I should say unto you, I'm talking to you, you know I'm talking to you. Because that matter that is in your heart matters to me. And the only thing that has kept me away from helping is because you have held on to it in your chest. Lay it on the ground. Bring it to me. Bring it to me in three nights of prayers. Three nights of prayers, the Lord said I should tell you. Bring it to me in three nights of prayers. And I will turn it around to become a testimony. Thank you, Father. There's somebody that is listening to me. The Lord said I should say unto you, take a seed. A seed, yes, a seed. And go and give a seed to the altar of the Lord where you worship. And say to the Lord, in obedience to your word by the mouth of your servant, I have brought this seed. And then tell the Lord the harvest that you expect for that seed. Because unto every seed, there is an appointed harvest. Thank you, Jesus. There's somebody that is listening to me. The Lord said, I should say unto you, if you check your body, I've given you the miracle. Because the seed that you sowed, I've given you the harvest for it. Beloved, the second lesson that is for us to learn from the testimony about the leprous man is surrender. Is to come to the Lord with that situation and say, Lord, you are greater than anything. The guy went on his knees and then the third lesson is faith that, moves, that looks forward. I call it forward faith. Forward faith. That's the third lesson. The guy said to the Lord, said, Lord, you can make me clean. Look at that sentence. There is a clean in it. Here is a man that is still dirty with leprosy. But he's already talking about a body that is clean. Faith forward. Forward faith. The third lesson that the Lord will want us to learn from this story is having faith for what we do not see that we will live to see it by coming to the Lord. And that has a parallel in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrew 11, it says, For without faith it is impossible to please God. The inverse of that is, For with faith a man pleases God. And then the other part of the scripture, that means, When a man pleases God, God is surely going to reward that man's diligence. In the expression of his faith. Child of God, as I round it all up, forward looking faith. A faith that sees the end even at the beginning. A faith that sees light even in the midst of darkness. Do you know, child of God, that faith is a nature of God? It is impossible to call yourself a child of God. It is, it is wrong to call yourself a child of God and not have faith. Then you don't resemble God. 
then the Almighty God, the creator of the heaven and the earth, is not your father. You are talking of another God. Because faith is the nature of God. All the way back to the beginning of God's interaction with man, we saw faith in Genesis chapter 1. The Bible said it was darkness that was upon the surface of the earth, yet God saw light and said, let there be light. He called for light out of darkness. The leprous man saw a cleansed body and he spoke to the Lord about it. Child of God, when you open your mouth in the place of prayer to pray to God, do you pray about your past? Do you pray about your present? How do you pray about your future? What do you see? What do you ask God for? Because remember, Matthew 7, 7 says, it is what you ask that you will receive. The book of Ecclesiastes says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. The Bible also says, you shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass. So what are you decreeing? Because it is that which you are mounting in the place of prayer that you are repeating. The man said to the Lord, Lord, you can make me clean. You can make me what I want to be in life. What do you want to be in life? He told the Lord. So three things, three life applicable lessons. I'm sharing with you as the key to experiencing the miraculous. Number one, perspective. Number two, surrenderedness or submission. A recognition that there is nothing that God is not greater than in time. And then thirdly, a forward looking faith. Not a present looking faith. A faith that calleth that which is not as though it is. I close with this scripture. Romans chapter 4 verse 17 and 18. Romans chapter 4 verse 17 and 18. Before God that is stood. The God that called the things that are not as though they are and give it life to the dead. In hope, verse 18, Abraham hoped against hope. Look at that. In hope, he hoped against hope that he might become the father of many nations. Even as it is told him. He doubted not God, considering not the deadness of the womb of his wife, nor the deadness of his own body being old. He, he wavered not in faith, rather giving thanks, for he considered him faithful who has promised that he is able to fulfill his promise. And he got it. That is a forward-looking faith. A faith that looks at God and from God looks at himself. Look at my use of word. A faith that looks at God first and what it sees in God, he reflects it to himself. If God is blessed, then I am blessed. If my father is great, then I am great. If my father is healthy, then I am healthy. Forward looking faith. I believe God that this discussion, this exposition has encouraged your heart. But take note, it all is premised on the leper coming to Jesus. 
That's what is praying minister. If you are listening to me and you already does not have a relationship, then this is an opportunity to do that. If you are listening to me and you don't have a relationship with Jesus presently, then you need to have one with him. Because see, every man that is born in time must have a time when everything is going down. It's scriptural. There is a time to sow. There is a time to reap. There is a time to gather. And there is a time to lose. So that when the time of diminishing comes, there will be somebody you can turn to and will be able to sustain you. And that's Jesus. The leprous man in his own dark hour had Jesus to run to. Who are you running to? Or who do you hope to run to when you're scared? So I'd like to introduce you to Jesus. If you don't mind, I'd like to pray with you. A very simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you. For your word this morning. Have mercy on me. Touch me. Save me from sin. Make me your friend. And be my father. Thank you for hearing my prayers. In Jesus name. I pray. If you have prayed a prayer. Like me. And like several other people all over the world, you are a child of God. You are welcome to the Living by Grace family. For we in this family, we live by grace. We are all on divine sponsorship. God is our sponsor. He sponsors our marriage. He sponsors our businesses. He sponsors our ministry. He sponsors our career. He sponsors our education. Even our daily going out and coming in, he sponsors them. Every one of us in the Living by Grace family, we are under divine sponsorship. I welcome you to this family. Here, it is not of what we reap, it is not of what we sow, it is of what God giveth unto us. God bless you. See you next time for another edition of Life Lessons from the Miracles of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you.